Guys, welcome to my favorite place in the entire world, Moab, Utah. And we're here not because of this truck, the Silverado, but the one that's coming behind me. Yep, it's our long-term Jeep Gladiator that we are gonna take across country this summer from Georgia all the way to Portland off-road. And we're here because we wanna do a shakedown and see just how good it is now that we have customized it. So Tommy, how good is it? So far, amazing. That's coming up next. You know, I've been coming here to Moab, Utah for almost 20 years and I still don't know all the trails and I still get lost. But imagine if you could do something like take this classic seven mile rim map with you on the trails so that you're never lost. Well, now you can using Onyx and this app you can download the entire map, and even when you're out of cell service, you'll still always know where you're at, and you'll also know the best trails. Check them out by clicking on the link below. In this episode of TFL's No Pavement Needed, we take a huge Silverado and drag it through a trail that's probably too narrow for it, ending up in wheel spinning and some frame scuffs, and then we take the Gladiator through the same trail, which works pretty much perfectly, and then of course at the very end of this video, we're going to let you know, has lifting our Gladiator completely ruined this fuel economy? We're about to find out. So Tommy, what's the plan this summer? We're going to drive this Gladiator all the way from the east coast to the west coast, entirely on dirt, so mud, rock, sand, water crossings, thousands of miles across the US with no asphalt. Yep, and today we're gonna find out just how off-road worthy we made it. So I'm gonna be in the Silverado, we're gonna go down Cane Creek, and we're gonna give it a bit of a shakedown, but before we do that, tell them what we've done to it. The goal of this project, quite honestly, was to build something straight out of Indiana Jones. I wanted something that looked like it was constantly on safari when I drove to the supermarket, but it also had to be functional and reliable. So to accomplish this, we partnered with our friends over at Mopar to create a Jeep that's completely covered under the factory warranty. We started with the Mopar 2-inch lift kit, which allows us to fit a nice beefy tire. Let's take a look. This is a BF Goodrich KM3 mud terrain. It's 35 inches tall, and it means we've got this huge sidewall. So when we're out on the trail for thousands of miles and our backs are killing us, we can air these down super low, so we've got a great squishy ride. Now these wheels are pretty cool, this is actually a steel wheel spare from a Gladiator. It's got an amazing look. Painted black, gives it almost a military look. And in the back, check it out, we have a 35 inch tire. It fits in the standard hole and it's a matching spare. And in the front here, we have a Mopar steel bumper. This is a really cool upgrade. Not only is it a lot tougher than the stock plastic one, it allows us to fit the most important piece of off-road recovery equipment, a winch. This is a Warren Xeon 10S winch with this really cool black and red Spidura winch cable. This winch could get us out of a lot of sticky situations, but hopefully we won't get into those situations at night because we've got these LED lights in the front. One of the coolest parts about this install of the lights are actually these auxiliary switches, which is all done through Mopar and Jeep. And what this means is that you don't have to cut holes in your dash to drill special funny switches and toggles. It's all incorporated through the switch panel down here by the shifter. And then in the rear, we've got a full decked storage system, which will allow us to organize all of our recovery gear, for example, or food or um, other items that we need along the trip. This keeps things nice and secure. It's also great because when you close this deck system and then close the tailgate and lock the Jeep, there's no way you can get access to your recovery gear so that no one can steal it. Finally, we get to the coolest part, the snorkel. I mean, yes, it does add a little bit of fresh air coming into the Jeep at the top, but Really, the snorkel is just to make me feel like I'm crossing the jungle looking for the crystal skull. We built the Jeep to be an overlander, not a rock crawler, so Cane Creek is perfect for that. It's a 6 out of 10 in terms of how difficult it is, which is about as difficult as we're going to get when we're crossing the country off-road. So, perfect trail, I think, for a shakedown of the Gladiator. You know what, Tommy? I don't think we could have picked 
a better place or a more perfect day to do the shakedown run. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty perfect out here. I mean, you've got the uh, huge bluffs, the sun is shining, the sand is soft. What could be better, huh? So the goal of today is not to, uh, you know, see how just straight out off-road capable the Gladiator is because that's not really what we built it for. You know, we know that the uh, Gladiator will do Hell's Revenge and it will do a lot more than, than that, but we built this to be a rig that we can drive across country, um, a rig that's going to be able to handle the, uh, you know, rough terrain. So that's what we're trying out. Yeah, and it looks, at least from behind, very plush. This thing's already beating me up, uh, but uh, the Gladiator looks like it's just floating across the local landscape. You know, I think this might be the first vehicle we have ever lifted <laughs> where the ride has gotten better than it was stock. I mean, usually when we lift vehicles, they get choppy, uh, they become too firm off-road, it overall makes the ride quality worse, but this ride's actually a lot like a, um, a Raptor in some ways, you know, it's very softly sprung. It doesn't bounce around, it just kind of absorbs all the impact. So you're getting to the point where we test the articulation of these two trucks. Uh, shall we do that? See if we can get uh, one wheel in the air and see how these guys do? Yeah, let's see if we did this correct or if we're going to get a lot of rubbing. We're right here. So even though we didn't build this as a rock crawler, it still has to articulate well. It still has to be able to conform to the landscape. So we've got a little bit of an articulation test here. So what we're going to do is try to get a couple wheels off the ground and see if these larger tires are going to rub at all. Okay, so right about there, we, up, should, we should be at max articulation. Go, just go a little far, farther forward. Keep going. Okay, stop right there. So this is our test of articulation. Right now, the front passenger wheel is completely compressed. It might be rubbing the fender well just a little bit. No, it's cleared actually. Whereas the rear passenger wheel is completely off the ground. I'll show you what I mean. Check this out. See? And you can see over here where it's full droop on this side. It's a little bit in the air, but it still is doing a good job of keeping contact with the ground. And so basically what we have now is a situation where only two wheels have traction. And in the past, this has been the kind of articulation where the vehicle gets stuck. Luckily, the Gladiator, out of the box, is one of the most capable off-roaders you can buy. You can lock both the front and the rear diff so that even if one wheel is in the air, the other wheel always gets power. And that's what makes this such an incredibly capable off-roader. See if it's making any weird clunks or anything. Oh, that feels pretty good. All right, good result there. I had my rear locker engaged so we could keep some forward momentum. Now I just unlocked it. Yeah, good job Jeep. Now this is full in stock from the factory, the Trail Boss. Now the Silverado has an independent front suspension and it doesn't have a selectable locker, so it's probably gonna get a little bit stuck through here. Harder passenger. Same line. I'm taking the exact same line that Tommy took and it's actually easy. I'm already stuck. I'm already stuck. Am I on your line, Tommy? Yeah, you're good. Exactly right. A little bit driver. Okay, straighten it out. That's exactly the same line. All right, same, same exact line. Let me turn the parking thing off. Yep. <laughs> I'm stuck Thanks, already. Keep coming, just a little bit more. Keep coming. A little more. Stop there, stop there. <laughs> so compare this to the uh, Gladiator with that um, solid front axle. It allowed a lot of flex, which meant I only had a couple inches. Here on the Silverado, I've got like two feet off the ground. Same line and everything. That's pretty wild, huh? That's a big difference. But we're almost completely out of clearance here in the front of the Silverado but we had a ton available on the front of the Gladiator. So, yeah, I know, it's very, very tippy, Dad. It's teeter-tottering, I know. All right, let's see if I can get out of here. There we go. Oh, there you go, you can see the G80 lock up there. Oh! Now we're gonna have the opposite issue. Well, this wheel should come in the air just a little bit. Slow. 
Okay? I'm stuck. I'm going backwards. Now it's an auto locker, so it's going to take some spinning before it gets unstuck. You're good. Am I good? <laughs> there it goes. It just locked up and pulled them out of there. Now obviously, very apples to oranges, but it's a good comparison to see the difference between independent suspension and solid axles. The Silverado is, you know, banging me around a lot. How's the uh, Gladiator? Yeah, it's doing really well, and we're not even aired down right now. This is just a really quick shakedown. Um, but I'm amazed. You know, the, the Gladiator shares a lot of components with the Wrangler. So it's similar underneath to a Wrangler. Not the same, but quite similar. But they drive completely different off-road because the wheelbase is so much longer in the Gladiator. Which is a really bad thing when you're in the Rubicon Trail. But when you're doing kind of bumpy, rocky forest roads or trails, it really smooths out the ride. Yeah, there's a reason why buses are so smooth and comfortable, and that's because they have a really long wheelbase. And the longer the wheelbase, the better the ride, because, well, it takes a lot longer for the front wheels to hit the same bump that the rear wheels Buses? Hit. What kind of luxury buses are you riding in that are this comfortable? I don't, I don't know that that's a great example, Dad. <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons. Uh, and, you know, we brought the Silverado along because uh, I kind of wanted to see just uh, what it's like to have a mid-size truck versus a full-size truck. Now, of course, on the on the uh, Transamerica Trail, we're going to be doing a little bit bigger for the other truck than the Silverado, and that's I'm going to leave it at that. I hate to say this, but bigger is not always better especially on the trail because this is our little test of width. In other words, the wider the truck, the more likely we are to do trail damage. Let me show you. So you have to come down this trail and you can, well, actually people have already hit this rock. There's also another rock right here that people have also hit. And I promise you, if you hit the rock with the side of the truck, the rock's gonna win. So let's take the Gladiator down second and first do the Silverado to show just how tricky a big wide truck can be on the trail. So if I get this wrong, we're probably gonna do a couple grand worth of damage, or I'm gonna do a couple grand worth of damage to the Silverado. I have to thread the needle here going between the two rocks and one of the downsides of the Silverado is it's got this massive hood, which means I effectively can't see the rocks right now. So I have to rely on Tommy to show me which way to go uh, because, yeah, all I see is red hood. How am I doing, Tommy? You got plenty of room. You're actually doing pretty good. Oh, oh, just hit. Hit something there. Not the rock, but underneath. Oh, there's a rock. That's a big old truck. That's a big old truck, Tommy. Yeah, that was good though. Yeah, well, you know, it's skill. It just took some time. Remember, it's uh, not the size of the tool, but how you use it. In this case, I've got a big tool and I used it well. Oh, oh that was not good. Now coming through here, the Gladi will be much easier because it's narrower and, and width is important all the time because it also means that I have a lot more choice in terms of line even if the trail is slightly wider than it is right now. And choice is always a good thing when you're off-road. Let's see if I scrape like my dad did. Oh yeah, this does not seem narrow whatsoever. We're in the Silverado, it definitely felt a little tight. And then coming through here, my dad had to put his tire up on this big rock because that's the only way he'd fit through here. Whereas I can avoid the big rock altogether and just go to the right where he couldn't because he'd be in the bush. It's never good being in a bush. Oh yeah, easy. Do you see that I avoided that big rock you had to drive over? <laughs> you made it look easy, Tommy.
You know, I'm really pleased with how this truck came out, and it's not the craziest Gladiator online. I mean, there's Hemi swaps with three times the power, and uh, there's ones with lifts four times as large, and tires that are much, much bigger out there online, but I think this came out perfect for exactly how we're going to use it. Sometimes when you modify a vehicle for off-road use, it becomes a cabbage cart on-road. Not this truck. This truck drives almost exactly the same on-road as it did before when it was stock. And it's got the full powertrain warranty with these 35-inch tires. If something breaks, I can bring it back to the dealer and they'll fix it for me because it's still under the FCA warranty. The Mopar guys are the same guys that built the truck to begin with. They're the same teams that, that build the truck um, as it was intended to be built. I like to call this the gully. Now that may not sound very off-roady, but it is a really good test of articulation. So Tommy is gonna to take both the Gladiator, as we like to call it, Go Be Glad. Get it? Go Be, that's the name of the color, Glad for Gladiator. He's gonna take Go Be Glad through it first, and then he's gonna take the Trail Boss to compare how the two trucks do when it gets a little articulated and a little rough. This will be a good test of approach, departure, breakover angle especially, as well as our locking differentials. So I'm not gonna do the front, I don't think I'll need it, but I will lock up the rear. And let's see how it articulates to the land, and let's see if we get any scraping. Luckily, oh, that was pretty tilty. <laughs> Luckily, if we do get any scraping, we've got tons of protection on this vehicle, both underneath and on the side in terms of the rock rails. Is that so tippy? Felt so normal walking it. Woo! All right, here we go. The nose feels pretty good so far. There it goes. Just climbed up these little ledges, no problem. Here we go down this little ledge. Crawl ratio is still really good even with these oversized tires. No issues whatsoever with the gearing. Yeah, that was a great result. No scrapes, didn't even lift a tire. Didn't really even need my locker. So let me turn that off. Impressive result. Tommy, go be glad made that look easy. Oh yeah. Any uh any butt clenching there or was it all pretty much uh Cake. It got a little off camber. That's one of the disadvantages of being narrow. Yeah. It feels a little more tippy. Um, but no, it was just a cake. All right, trial the trail boss. See if it is indeed the trail boss of this trail. First of all, <laughs> the truck feels a lot more enormous than the Gladiator, and the visibility is much worse. This is still a good off-road truck, but compared to that thing, it doesn't quite hold a candle. All right, getting pretty tippy there. Woo! Lifted a wheel for sure. I don't know if I trust this approach angle very much. I'm gonna take it super slow. One mile an hour! I would say this is less fun. Hit on the approach angle though, that was good. This feels less happy. But it's doing it. Oh, that was good too, no hitting whatsoever. So, we made it over the gully. Not too bad, but definitely not as confident as the Jeep. So, Trail intern or trail boss? I'd say trail middle manager. Yeah, you know, uh, the Gladiator just looked uh, a little bit more comfortable, right? You've got the rock rails, you've got the big tires, you've got the articulation, and you've got the snorkel. I mean, look, it just looks like it belongs out here. So I think we're ready to go and do a little bit of uh, cross country uh, Transamerica trail. Yeah, it's gonna be a good adventure.
Ouch! Yeah, yeah, that was just boom right on the back of the bumper. It's just a big old heavy truck. It's just not as much fun as a built truck. It just isn't. That is pretty cool, an old school dune buggy from Colorado with a bike on top. That is pretty cool. I love that. Thanks. Yeah, is it, does it have a Volkswagen engine? Yeah. Yeah, 1600? Yeah. Nice. How far are you going? It's time to turn around. All right, have fun. All right, Tommy, now that we've lifted the Gladiator and put on bigger tires, we need to know what kind of fuel economy it's getting as part of the shakedown. So we're going to do a uh, classic TFL MPG test from here to Moab, Utah, which means going over two passes uh, and seeing what the truck says and seeing what the pump says. Now, what the truck says is going to be off because we've got different size tires. Yeah, that's right, because we didn't recalibrate our speedometer, so it's going to be reading a little bit differently than actuality. Although, I did drive through one of those radar speed things, yeah. and it's pretty spot on even with these big tires. Yeah, so the way it works is uh, we fill it up, we wait for 30 seconds after it clicks, and we fill it up again, and then we drive it for as far as we can, and then we fill it up again, and we figure out what kind of fuel economy we're getting. Because if we're going to drive across the country, it would be good to know what kind of fuel economy we're getting. All right, there's our stopwatch. 30 seconds. Okay. That's it. All right. Off to Moab. Reset. All right, there you go. So we made it to Fruta, Colorado for our MPG test on the new lifted Gladiator. How many miles does the Jeep say that we drove? Well, it says we averaged 17.4. Okay, but how many miles? I don't know. 231. So the Jeep says 231, and what does Google say? Uh, 246. There you go. So we'll have to go with the Google number, 246. says the Gladiator Rubicon will do 22 mpg on the highway, which is what we've been doing, all yep. highway driving. Yep. But the real math is 246 divided by 13.540. Yep. So what's the number? 18.1. Whoa! Well, 18.2 if you round. So we lost 4 mpg yeah. with the lift and the bigger tires, huh? Yeah, and we actually find on this route that we can typically meet the EPA number stock. Yeah. So it's a pretty big drop when you lift it. But what we lost in fuel economy, we gained in off-road ability. Yeah. Guys, thanks for watching. Remember, check out TFL Car, TFL Truck, TFL Now, TFL Classics, TFL Off-Road, for more news, <laughs> views, and of course, Moab Adventure Reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.